Hello and welcome to Coffee with Kerry. I'm Kerry Griffiths, or some of you may know me as Kerry the Crafter. And this is a spot, if you've never been here before, where I grab myself a cup of coffee, I choose a topic that's grabbed my attention, and I talk about it from my own personal viewpoint. I'm not sponsored by anyone, I'm not backing anyone, I'm not against anyone. This is purely me just trying to maybe raise a topic, raise a conversation, raise a thought maybe about something that... It's affecting me, affecting you, maybe affecting the planet. You never know, I may even get to those big subjects. Right, bear with me a second. I always do that, I always burn my lips. I make a fresh cup of coffee every time I do this, and I forget that my coffee machine, um, you don't put cool milk into it. it, it basically all comes out of this little pod. And basically I forget that with my regular coffee, I would use um, a dash of milk from the fridge, Whereas here it's piping hot when it comes out. Anyway, that's my saga burning my mouth. So today's topic is one that I think many of us arts and crafters um, are probably guilty of to a certain degree. And that is, I think our art supplies overwhelm us. Now, we, we have got, and I speak for myself now, um, We've got into, or I've got into, a cycle over the years that I've been doing art is I will watch lots of YouTubes, I will watch demonstrations at shows, I will watch shopping channels, I will read art books, I will, all of the, all of, all of and all of the above, and a product will be used, and I'll go, oh, I must have that. And then I'll go on the internet to find it, and then I'll find that the thing I want comes in 10 different colours, and I'm like, Ooh, and it's usually cheaper to buy the 10 different colors than it is to buy the 10 individual colors. So then I'm suckered into buying a gift set or something. Um, let's see, what would an example be? Um, metallic, metallic um, gilding wax. Okay, I was doing a mixed media project where I needed like an antique gold brass sort of um, wax and basically it's a wax it's a bit like a shoe polish and once your project is dry you just rub your fingers gently on it and then rub it onto the piece and it adds this aged metallic look to it and I only wanted the dark gold one but they had an offer of six of them and it was all six colors in their range so of course I went oh I really like this now I only really wanted one but yeah I spent more money and I, I actually bought all six and to this very day, probably four of them have never even been opened. And they're just sat there. And, and they're not going to go off. Very, they might dry out a little bit, but I can just spritz them with water. They'll come back to life. But they're, they're just sat there. It's like, I mean, I like to use colour pencils. And the brand I normally use is Dur Durwent. Durwent? Durwent. Durwent, yes. The Blendables. So I bought myself a, a small pack of those. And then I was like, oh, really like those. So I then bought myself another small pack and then by nature, I'm one of these people who likes to collect whole sets of things. It took me many years to realize that one, I can assure you. So of course, I then started going, oh, is there another set I haven't got? So I then stopped myself, thank goodness. And I have done that so many times, like a new type of stamp pad will come out. So I have to buy the whole range of colors. Um, I will stumble across a new creator maybe for rice paper. So I buy rice paper in every single colour or style they've got. And I think a lot of us are guilty of we feel we must have when actually we don't must have anything. We we we're creative people. I mean look look for ways of actually creating the thing yourself with your supplies that you've already got before you rush out and buy the supplies you don't have. Um, one thing I saw, when was it? I think it must have been January. Yes, it was January this year. Um, For All Davies, uh, a New Zealand artist, did a project video and she does fabulous work. Love, love her, love her. It's so creative. I love the energy she's got. And what she did is she created backgrounds with a limited colour palette. Like she had, I think, five colours. And they were all within, within the same sort of field of colours. I think there were neutrals and browns and bronzes and gold did she have a black no i think she had a blue black i can't remember what it was called um 
actually I think she called it sepia but it wasn't it wasn't what I think sepia is and she made this huge amount of backgrounds using just these colors and it looked fabulous and I think it was a lesson I suddenly went oh maybe I don't need the whole range of all the paints I've got maybe I just need to look at what I've got got I also think that we're so used to especially me I will reach for I'll go out to my local art store to pick up one thing and obviously I always walk down the paint aisle and I'm like oh I don't have that color and I don't have that color and by the time I left the shop I probably spent 30 or 40 pounds when I went in for maybe a pack of paper at 5 99 my nature my issue I'm dealing with it um, well, I'm not dealing with it I just put it on the shelf um, but sometimes I forget there are three primary colors you can make every color from the three primary colors or combinations of the colors that you've made from the three primary colors if that makes sense now I'm not great about teaching color theory I will never do a video or I shouldn't say never because you don't know what the future holds I don't ever intend making a video on how to make colors out of other colors there are some fabulous artists out there who teach color theory who will who will do that um, but I sometimes forget I don't need every color green under the sun blue and yellow make green and then what I add to the blue and yellow which should make green will change the the feel of the green if I've got a blue and yellow and I've made green and I add black maybe it'll turn into an olive color um, maybe if I add a stronger yellow to it it'll make more of a lime or a sap green it's just it's just knowing what we've got around us and I do think a lot of the time I will stand in my craft cave art room art studio whatever you want to call this room and I will look around and there are so many choices for me to make I sometimes don't make a choice at all I also look at my supplies because I do periodically about six months every six months I will have a giant cleanup in this area not that it's messy but just a giant cleanup so I'll dust shelves I'll actually open all the drawers I'll see what I've actually gone oh put that by for later and the things I found in drawers are gone I didn't remember I even bought that um, and very often I will end up with a box of stuff I'm going right okay I don't need this I've never used it I don't foresee me using it so luckily enough I have a friend who actually teaches um, in care homes she does art projects with them she does hobby and craft style projects I also have another friend who actually works with children so I will very often make up a box of supplies which to me I'm like I'm never going to use those like because I do shopping channel TV as a demonstrator sometimes companies will send me ranges of like their their pads or their papers and stuff that I'm never going to use I just it gets sent to me as part of a gratuity to encourage me to create things for the TV show which I do but you know what I may have opened one pot of paint used two or three brush strokes from it close the pot of paint I'm never going to use that color again that was the color that I used for that show and it's a branded color and maybe it's not a color I like or maybe they've sent me um decoupage sheets and I've had to do a demonstration on maybe decoupaging a framed piece of art or a card but they sent me the entire range of all their decoupage books I made one project and all of that will go into a draw so to keep myself a bit sane I will actually go through every six months and go right do I truly truly need this or am I just hoarding this and hoarding isn't a word I like but let's say I'm saving it for another day and that another day is probably never going to come around so I've become quite honest with myself now things like paints a lot of the time I will hang on to because there's always a time when maybe I've got a paint where I don't actually like the color of it but you know what I can throw another color into it and change it into something else um, another thing I'll I'll keep hold of is things like um, MDF pieces there's a company I work with and they do lots of MDF or what do you call it in America 
we sometimes call it chipboard as well, but I think you call cardboard chipboard. It's that brown, it's made up of um, wooden fibers all mixed together with glue and press. It's, it's, I can't even get to it because there's a box in front of the drawer. Um, so they will send me those and then I will paint them up and create stuff with them and they'll sell on the TV show. But usually I have a whole load of those things left over. Now, if there is a specific shape that I'm not likely to use, say it's an anchor or it's a heart or it's um, a rabbit for Easter or something, I will just pass those on. But if it's generic shapes like circles or ovals, squares or rectangles, I will keep them. Because very often, instead of doing a canvas or a canvas board, I can do it on a wooden panel. So it's that sort of thinking that I, I try to encourage in myself. But I do think we get to the point where we want the next best thing. We want the next new gadget. We want the next greatest colour out there. And there are certain designers out there, big company designers, who really play on that. That That's one of their selling techniques. They'll, they'll have a very successful range of um, ink pads. And then they'll actually... Oh, I've got paint on mine now. Sorry about that, guys. Dirty fingernails. It's acrylic paint, I assure you. Um, and then they'll make a variant on the original um, ink pads. And then we all feel we have to buy those. And then they'll come out with maybe a pencil set to support them. And they'll demonstrate using the pencils with the inks. And then we all have to buy those. So to see what I mean, we can very easily build up our stashes of stuff to the point where you just can't function because there's too many decisions that you have to make. I like walking over to my paint collection, which is just over there. I've got four boxes. Um, let's see, let me just grab a ruler a second. Okay, the boxes are about 10 inches by about six inches. I've got four plastic boxes. That's what my paints sit in. Um, I don't need more than that paint. In fact, there's probably paint in there I don't need, so I'll use it for stuff as I go along. But I try not to buy paint just on an impulse. It's like we've got a store here called The Works in Britain. And very often they'll sell off 12 by 12 um, craft pads um, of like Christmas designs, Easter designs, and they sell them off for £4 a pad. Now, that probably about five dollars five fifty maybe in american i'm not it's more than that in australian i'm not really sure the conversions but i will buy those because they're on sale do i need them no i then have to find ways to use those which actually works quite well because what i do is then i use them for my color combination challenges i'll use them for my what to do with the 12 by 12 video playlist but i don't actually need them i'm just one of those impulse buyers for art supplies i'm like that for blank books as well you know books with nice covers with nothing in them yeah i'll buy those i'll put it on the shelf i'll never use it i just buy it so Back to the topic, um, you've got a whole collection of art supplies. Do you really need to add to it or is it actually encroaching on your creativity um, because you've got too many decisions to make? If that's the case, then maybe have a clean out in your art space. Put the stuff you don't think you're working with or need into a box. Put that box somewhere in the house, back of a cupboard. Put it in the attic or the loft if you've got one. Put it in the garage if it's not perishable. Put it in the trunk of the, of, trunk of the car so you can't see it. And then if you haven't used it in six months, donate it. Pass it on to someone else. You don't need it. But if you do discover you need it, you've not done the final thing and given it away. You know it's somewhere else in the house. But because it's not within your sight you're probably not going to think about using it. So anyway, life lessons from me on that one, because I do all of the above and I can be accused of all of that. And I'm really bad because I can collect things to the point where it's just getting absurd. Like, I mean, I've just bought myself a travel um, watercolour palette. It's only a little one. I already have three other watercolour palettes. They're a little bit bigger, maybe twice the size. But I'm going on vacation in a few months' time and I want to take a little water palette with me. Now, to be honest with you, the water palette is about four inches long 
and my next water palette is like nine inches long. I could have just packed the bigger one, but no, of course, I had to buy the smaller one because it was cute. Um, so anyway, enough of my foibles and my problems. So hopefully, guys, that gives you a little bit of something to think about. Um, maybe declutter a bit. Maybe donate. Maybe pass it on to a friend that maybe is not as fortunate as yourself and they they don't have the ability um, or the finances to build their stash up. Um, if you really only have small things you want to pass on, consider doing racks or random acts of kindness or Happy Meal. Maybe make up a little package, maybe one of those little puffer bags, um, bubble wrap envelopes, or maybe a little box, and find someone and just mail it to them. You mail it to them anonymously if you wish. Um, just send it on to them and it'll it'll boost their supplies. So I'm not saying throw it away. Don't. Throw it to a friend. Throw it to someone in need. Throw it to a charity. Put it into a gift shop or uh, a charity shop or a thrift stop shop. Just make sure something d is done with it because paper stock and card stock has no expiry date. But paints and glues and that do. And yeah, you may go, oh, they're not going to go off. And they do. Some of those craft glues can get a bit smelly and get a bit gloopy and gluey. And some of the glues over time just dry out within their bottles or their tubes. Um, think about it. Just have a thought. Anyway, hopefully that was okay and not too painful, guys. Just just wanted people to think about what they have around them. Um, maybe it's time for a clean out every six months. Maybe once a year. Put it in a diary. Time to go through the drawers you never open. And goodness knows there's enough drawers I don't open. So until next time, guys, have a good one. Enjoy your coffee. Have a chalky biscuit somewhere. Um, have a look around you and go, do I really need that? When did I last open that drawer? Or what's in it? And can someone else benefit from it? I mean, don't let your craft supplies overwhelm you and then stifle your creativity because you have to make a decision. Just don't, don't bother about it. Just let that go and do what you do best, which is create. Happy crafting, guys.